Welcome back, folks. Uh, we're going to start out the semester by looking at just some notational stuff that we do uh, throughout the course. I think it's important to get it out early, uh, but this should be a, a brief video uh, just about how we write numbers, we talk about them, and uh, some of the notation we use when um, expressing values as variables. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to start out uh, talking about, oh, I got to here, ready? This is me nice and big, and then put myself down in the corner here. Uh, the first thing that I'm going to talk about is uh, a notation that might look familiar if uh, if you've taken your, your science prereqs, certainly you've taken physics, uh, if you've taken chemistry, uh, or other courses like that, uh, you're going to be uh, very familiar with uh, scientific notation. And that's not what we're going to use, but that's a good a good starting point to talk about it. Uh, so scientific notation uh, versus what we call engineering notation. I find uh, double E's uh, tend to uh, use engineering notation more than some of the other disciplines. Uh, and I think that comes from the fact that our numbers uh, tend to get very, very big and very, very small uh, in the same problem. That's um, less of a challenge uh, in mechanical engineering, although not impossible. Uh, but because it happens so often to us, we use uh, something called engineering notation. Okay, so let's get the word notation in there as well. It's related to scientific notation. If you recall from your, your prereqs that uh, in scientific notation, uh, the exponent uh, is a multiple of uh, 1. So it can be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. It can be negative 1, negative 2 if we need to express smaller numbers. Uh, and it can even be 0 if, uh, if it's uh, a, something near a whole number. Multiple of 1. Okay. So let's see. Right. So that 1 is an important number because it's going to be different over here. So the exponent is a multiple of 1, and we have one digit uh, to the left of the decimal place. Or a decimal point. Okay, so again, that 1 is an important number. And that's what we're used to. Uh, when we're looking at scientific notation. So you might have uh, a number, let's see, what would it be? Uh, one, oh, we'll go with blue. Uh, one point, what do you want it to be? 267 uh, E7, and that'd be fine. That's in scientific notation. We have one decimal point, or one digit to the left of the decimal point, and our exponent over here uh, is you know, it's a multiple of one. It's it's an integer. Um, in engineering notation, uh, we're gonna it's gonna look similar with a couple subtle differences. Exponent is a multiple of three, and there's a reason we pick three. Okay, and uh, we have one to three digits. Okay, so it might be one, it might be two, it might be three. One to three digits to the left of the decimal point. Okay, and we really do this uh, because it lines up with our language. If we have a thousand of something, uh, then it's going to have an exponent of 3. If we have a million of something, it's going to have an exponent of 6. Okay, we can go the other way and we can talk about uh, thousandths and uh, millionths. Okay, when we write and say numbers, uh, we we group the digits into group of 3s. That's, that's where we put the commas, if you remember. Uh, and, uh, and it kind of lines up with our language. So it becomes a little easier to uh, communicate numbers when uh, we use engineering notation uh, because it lines up with our language. Okay, so that 1.267, it, uh, it has one digit to the left of the decimal point, uh, but um, 
but the the exponent is in a multiple of three so we have to change it so we either have to make this uh, well six would be nearby uh, or we could bump it up and make it nine uh, and let's think about what happens with that all right so we're going to move the uh, the decimal place if we move it to the right by two then we're no longer going to have one digit uh, to the left of the decimal place so we've got to move it uh, one digit to the right and as we move it one digit to the right uh, we'll get uh, 12.67 e6 okay so uh, very similar notations uh, but a but a subtle difference uh, but that subtle difference lets me uh, very quickly say that this is 12.67 million okay and uh, you know when it's e7 uh, it's not it might not be entirely clear that it's 12.67 million as quickly if you if you're if you're good and you're fluent with numbers that's great um, but that engineering notation's a little nicer in that respect okay so uh, along with uh, scientific and engineering notation uh, we also have to talk about uh, units uh, and mostly we're going to be using uh, SI units. There are a few legacy units that are sticking around. You might run into them if you're looking at old schematics. Certainly uh, in, uh, in the industries that our students go into, a lot of you end up in aerospace or military industries. Some of those products stick around for 30, 40 years and you'll be looking at schematics from uh, around the time I was born. And uh, and you'll find some of these old units before the SI units were adopted. And it's good to um, oh, you can broke the fourth wall there. You can see what I'm about to cut and paste. Um, it's good to be familiar with those, uh, but we're mostly going to stick with SI units. It's good practice to uh, do your best to uh, stick with SI units. Okay, so certainly not limited to our SI units here, but. Um, these are some of the ones that we're going to be using as we talk about uh, charge and current and voltage and resistance. Uh, we can see some of uh, these SI units uh, in this table. Uh, so uh, we'll certainly talk about watts as well. So this isn't complete, but um, these are the ones that we're, we're headed towards in the, in the near future. The other bit of notation that uh, I'll talk about right now is the... Um, the difference between, let's go back to orange, the difference between uh, constant values, and it's really when we're talking about variables. If I'm going to express a value as a variable in an equation, uh, if it's a constant, uh, it's going to be a capital, okay, a capital letter, and if it's time varying, so if that value changes with time, which plenty of our values will, uh, then we're going to make it lowercase. Okay, and we can see that here where this value is a capital V and this would be a constant. Okay, and this value here is a lowercase v and this one would be uh, time varying. Okay, and we can see that for charge and current and voltage, and we have resistance, impedance, and reactance that are all kind of related to each other. Uh, and um, we're going to differentiate uh, using capital and lowercase letters. Okay, last thing I want to talk about uh, in this video uh, is the, um, the use of prefixes. This is another thing that I find uh, double E's uh, tend to do more. Uh, often than any of the other disciplines and uh, that's to use our SI prefixes and it works out pretty nicely uh, when you use engineering notation uh, because we're going to focus on the SI prefixes that are multiples of three okay so if you're using engineering notation it's going to be uh, a short trip to uh, get the SI prefix so let me get those on the screen for you okay bring them over here all right, yeah, it's right behind my head. There we go, right there. <clears throat> okay, so uh, look at these. They're all factors of three. 
okay, and um, and that's going to line up with our engineering to notation, like I said, and um, this again goes back to we use really really big numbers and really really small numbers in the same problems, and a lot of our part values are going to be uh, discussed using these SI prefixes, and I want you to get used to using them as part of the number. So if I were to see uh, one milliamp. When I enter it in the calculator, and the calculator has a setting for engineering mode, uh, if you're using MATLAB, uh, there's a command I can show you that uh, gives you the output in engineering mode. Uh, if we play with Python, I'm thinking about it for this class, get excited, um, then uh, I'm sure there's a way to do it in there as well. I can look into that. I'm less familiar with that one, but I think it might be a good tool for us. Uh, to use since it's free and open source. Is it open source? I don't know. It's free. Um, so when I enter one milliamp, so lowercase m, okay, one milliamp, I would enter that in my calculator as 1e negative 3. Okay, and I would treat that prefix as part of the number because if I enter it in the calculator that way uh, and the result has some other exponent, uh, then the calculator is going to figure that all out for me. I don't have to sit here and be clever uh, because I know that I am not clever enough. And I promise you, you are probably not clever enough as well, uh, that eventually there's going to be a problem where you think you know that, well, I'm dividing by milli, it's going to end up in kilo, uh, but there's other things going on in the problem, and uh, you're going to get the wrong answer. And getting the wrong answer uh, can, at the very least, cost you money or your company, uh, unfortunately it can kill people uh, so we try to find a way uh, to handle these numbers so that we're confident in the answer and I'm telling you if you take that SI prefix uh, in the milli and you enter it in your calculator as e negative 3 and then whatever comes out of the calculator you convert back to an SI prefix uh, you're gonna be a lot better off let the calculator do, do the thinking for you as much as you can it's a great tool but you gotta learn how to use it and use it consistently Okay, so uh, so that's one millionth of an amp. Okay, we have one, no, I'm sorry, that's one thousandth of an amp. Hey, good job, Dave. Um, one millionth of an amp if we get down to micro, one billionth of an amp if we get down to nano, and we can work our way up the other way. Uh, we might talk about, if you're talking high power stuff, you might get into kilovolts, uh, or even if you're just working on your car and you're looking at the voltage on the, tr uh, on the ignition coil, you might get into kilovolts, okay? Not so much in megavolts. You could get into mega ohms. That's not unheard of. Uh, and then we have some larger values, giga, tera, and peta. Where we might be familiar with those uh, from data storage, um, but those are all useful. All multiples of three. SI prefixes they line up with uh, engineering notation. And uh, and now I'm going to have you practice it. Uh, so pop back out of the video uh, and look at the uh, the kind of quick uh, web work questions I've asked you about converting notations and give it a try for yourself. And uh, and then from here we're going to move on. We're going to start to introduce some of the um, some of the variables and and types of values that we're going to use uh, to build up over the course of the semester. All right. So stay tuned and good luck.